Hi again, everyone. I'm Ollie Matthews. This is the Narcissistic Resistance. Uh, no contribution with this video. Sorry for the uh, sorry for the delay, but I have been completely caught up, enthralled, whatever you want to call it, um, with the impeachment hearings. It's just, you know, it, it, it's so angering because I, I relate to it so much. It's It's so much of what we've all dealt with in our own lives where your it is your responsibility to prove your innocence. That's what these that's what these sociopaths I mean that's really their weapon against it. these sociopaths, these narcissists, whether in your own life or or, or, or these leftist communists is what, what you're seeing here. It is your job to prove your innocence, and you can never prove yourself innocent because the game is rigged. The game is rigged. It is just disgusting. It's just disgusting watching. And I have to say, I have to say, Trump's lawyers are doing a real good job. You know, I'm glad they're dragging Biden and Burisma and all that corruption explaining how this guy is bringing in $83,000 a month, him and his partner each, you know, after, after Biden becomes the, the point man in Ukraine and he joins the board as the company is already under investigation. He joins this corrupt company and boom, it, then it gets shut down. Like nobody could figure out the reason he's on the board is because he was under investigation. That's why he was there. That was the payoff to get it shut down. It's unbelievable. So, like, I'm watching this and I'm long, like, and I'm just getting more and more annoyed, you know, that somehow, somehow, Ukraine, giving money to Ukraine affects my my um, our national security it's in it's an impeachable offense if we don't want to give taxpayer money to the freaking Ukraine I mean are you serious are you serious so but that's not really what I want to talk about in this video I just wanted to give my little preamble on I don't want to get too political but but man oh man man oh man well, if you're going to put dumb stuff on Facebook, like, like if you're a Trump supporter and insulting and like do yourself a favor, delete yourself. It's like, okay, I'll delete you. Like, that's not a problem. That's not a problem. Don't, don't then like say, oh, I wasn't talking to you, Ollie. I'm like, well, like, you know, my feelings. So, so what, what, what do you, what do you think? What do you think was going to happen? So don't, you want it gone. Then it's, if you can't handle it, you can't handle it. I mean, I have plenty of followers who have pretty left-leaning uh, posts on Facebook. I don't go unfriending them over it, you know, because I, I don't let it bother me. But if you're going to put something out there and then and then uh, people follow through on it, hey, I can't help you. I can't help you with that. But I did want to talk to you, and, I, and I've made this point before that – Sometimes, you know, the, the easiest solution and the best solution is right in front of your face. And for whatever reason, for whatever biases or however you were trained or whatever it was, you were, you were, you were led to believe, you know, you, you don't follow through on it. So, and one of those, like one of those examples, you know, with, with Charlene trying to find um, trying to find work and trying to find some stability down here was you know she had it in her head like you know she needed an office job she needed she needed an office job to um, like business to, to be successful and to be able to do anything worthwhile and what it turns out is you know like after the pool store, 
you know, after the pool store, you know, misery, you know, where she was just made so miserable. She was like, why don't I just go try and be a server, you know? So it's like, right. So luckily, like I said, she got hired right at the corner. You know, I, I originally said she was going to be working at um, two different places, two jobs. She only ended up working at the one place, the place that was even closer. You know, didn't, didn't want to bite off more than she could chew right away. And it looked like very early on that the first place that she got hired at was going to be a good job. And within a month, it already is. I mean, she's gotten really, really good at the job to the point where um, the owner noticed, and he has a second place a main place up on the beach a beach bar where you know there's no food it's all just it's all just drinks money money just basically you know uh cocktail waitressing and bartending and then you know bartenders get a piece of everything um so he's like hey i want to move you up to uh to the other place you know you can work between the two of them you know but you know the other place is where you really are going to make you're really going to do well. <clears throat> and, you know, the nice thing about this is it's money every day. And, you know, you know, it's cash. It's cash every day. And, and, I, and I'll tell you this. And I, I, I think one of the reasons why I didn't suggest it is, you know, and this was got me, th it's got me thinking a lot again about, about my childhood because, you know, of all the things that Charlene could be doing, like work-wise, and my mother, you know, how my mother ended up feeling about Charlene. Whore, 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 fuck, kill her, she, you know, all that. If my mother was alive and knew Charlene was working as a server, she would absolutely respect it 100%. Absolutely, because... Of all my mother's, um, of all my mother's abilities to be inappropriate and rude and crass and just not give a fuck, okay, she was never, ever, ever rude to a server, a waiter or a waitress, ever. And she always, like, she hammered it. It's like, don't you ever be rude to the server. You don't know what they go through. You don't know how hard that work is. And that's because, and I've talked about it <clears throat> before, and I've talked about it in many videos, you know, my mother worked when I was a kid as a, as a waitress for the seafood restaurant Koi's. And Koi's was a cool place, to be honest with you. I, mean, I was never into seafood, but I did like my mother's uniform. It was like, it was a sailor's outfit. It was like white pants with a blue sailor top and the thing on the, 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 the collar brass and the, the, the thing on the back, the, 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 I don't know what it's called, and the hats. It was a nice uniform. And the place, you know, sometimes my father had to work late and my mother couldn't get a sitter right away. So it's a lot of times, so sometimes when she had an earlier shift, because the place didn't open till like three in the afternoon. It was like three or four or five in the afternoon till like two, three in the morning there. Because the place sat off of Route 17 and Patterson Plank Road, Route 120, which was where Giant Stadium, Giant Stadium was maybe a quarter mile up Route 120, Patterson Plank. So this was like a prime location um, where you just get um, highway traffic, People coming out of Giant Stadium, and the Meadowlands, and the horse racing. You get all the all the all the Giant players and the and the Jet player autographs. Like when I was a kid, I had Mark Gastineau's autograph, Beasley Reese. Um, <clears throat> I think Parcells ate there. Walt Michaels ate there. Wesley Walker ate there. Um, they, they love the seafood. I mean, because it was really good seafood. I mean, this wasn't like a Red Lobster. This was a family-owned seafood restaurant. So my mother, so it, was a, so it was a popular place, and it was a nighttime place. 
So, so my mother, I guess, sometimes when, when my father was either working late and, and Ginny couldn't come get me or she couldn't get a sitter right away, a lot of times in the, she would bring me in to work with her until, and I would sit because I liked it in there because it was dark. It was a very, because my mother was a very different person, I guess, at work um, that I'm realizing. The place was dark. It had like this dark wood. It was like the inside of a ship. And they had these red candle lanterns. And, but they had these really good pretzels and crackers. And, and the chef, the chef, Billy, Billy, he loved me. I love Billy. Billy was like, like this old, like seven, this old, you know, I guess this old black guy, no, no front teeth. You could barely understand them, you know, but he'd make me like, he'd make me a hamburger. He'd make me fry. Like, like he'd try to tell me jokes and like, he'd be yelling at the, he'd be yelling at the other kids, yelling at the bus boys, yelling at everybody. And like, it was just he, like, he was just a funny guy. He was a fun guy. It was a, it was a fun place. So, so when I would sit there and then like all the other waitresses, I remember like John Clancy and I remember the names, man. And Mrs. Coy, Mrs. Coy was the owner, you know, cause the place was Coy. She loved me. She loved me. She was like, Oh, he's such a good kid. He, just, he makes no problems. <laughs> he just sits there and he colors and he like, you know, so they didn't mind having me there either. So I don't know. It was one of those weird, I guess, okay memories. But it showed me my mother knew how to act when there when there's money involved. My mother knew how to act. My mother knew how how to act because I and I remember, you know, and then then eventually like I'd be there and then either my father would pick me up or Jenny would pick me. Would either be my father or Jenny if I was at Coy's because it wouldn't be like some teenage babysitter. So it would usually be my father or Ginny would come in and pick me up and we'd, we'd go home. Like, yeah, I'd have like a hamburger or a grilled cheese, you know. Maybe I still ate fish sticks back then. Maybe. Or maybe they used to give me some crab cakes. Maybe I, I like some... Because they, they really liked me. The, the cook liked me, the bus boys. Like, it was... They were all right there. You know, it was all right. It was a decent memory. So... So then my father would, you know, I guess he would come pick me, would come pick me up, or Jenny would come pick me up, and then, you know, my mother would come home two, three in the morning, and sometimes I would be up. Sometimes I'd wake up, and like, cause I, I we fell asleep in the back room, or 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 what, whatever, or Jenny had me when she was living still at Virginia's house. I'd be there for whatever reason, not in. Not in my house because yeah, because Jenny didn't want to be going back home at two, three in the morning, and so maybe sometimes it was easier to watch me there, or because Virginia was there as well. So so I'd be at Virginia's house, and my mother would come pick me up, and like sometimes later nights, yeah, and then I would remember her taking all her money out, like she was just pulling out wads of cash <clears throat> from everywhere her belt her thing inside under here and i remember she would just be flipping through cash like wads and wads of cash now this is the 70s 70s and she worked there i guess through the 80s you know the early 80s so i mean i guess it was probably a lot of singles and five but no i mean there was everything there was, I mean, she just had wads and wads and wads of piles of cash. And, I, you know, I said this when my father had lost his job. My mother maintained that entire house, two cars, insurance, everything on one waitress's, uh, on a waitress's salary. On a waitress's salary. Now, it's a lot harder to do that now. But, you know, same thing's basically happening now. With Charlie, like, not only have I only had to put gas in my car one time since she started working there, and that's counting from the time she dropped the cell phone off at the pool store, and we got back, I had half a tank of gas in, in, in the car. 
Okay, since that day, I've only gotten gas one time, and I still have half a tank of gas right now because the car don't go in, and now it, now it just don't go anywhere. You know, supermarket down the road to drop her off real quick because, you know, the, the walk there, you'll get sweaty. and I don't, She don't want to get sweaty before her shift. But, like, she just walks home in four minutes at, at the end of the day. And she comes home and she's talking about it. And she was pulling the same move as my mother. And I'm, like, pulling, the, like, just wads of cash again. And I'm like, wow, if my mother could have lived, my mother would have respected, my mother would have respected that because my mother understood what that job took. And she's like, you always over, you always tip the waitress, you always over tip the waitress, you know, she gives you good service, you give her more than 20% because, you know, because they get screwed, they get screwed a lot. A lot, and they really, and they don't make anything really make anything per hour with the server pay. I think yeah, server pay down here is five bucks an hour, which is better than most places. I know most places it's like it's as little as like two and change an hour. The point is this, you know, the point is those server jobs, that those jobs were sitting there the whole time. Okay. And for whatever reason, and for whatever reason, whatever the biases were, you know, it's just overlooking them, you know. And that one thing, and, and, and really the, the, the real purpose, the one thing I want to get across in this video, you know, to everybody, to anybody who thinks they're stuck, you know, they're trapped, they have no way out, I have no skills, what can I do? Okay, you can be a server, you know? The ser I mean, it is the it is one job where, you know, even with a lot, not without education, or you don't need a lot of education or any, if you got some pers interpersonal skills and a little bit of drive, you can go be a server. You can come home with money every day, every day, okay? And not even that, you have to do that for the rest of your life. But it's a, it's, a, it's a pretty good start. It's a pretty good start, you know. And I, I'll, say, I'll say, I'll make this last one last point. What it's done for her, for her, like, interpersonal and her mood and her and depression has just been remarkable because, you know, she's around motivated people. You know, you don't work, you don't make money, you know. So she's not around a lot of people who are there trying to look for a dick in attention, you know, who are trying to compete with another girl, you know, over her looks or what she looks like or what she has or what. No, they're all there to make money. And because they're all there to make money, it seems like she could be, she could be friends with a lot of them. Like she likes everybody she works with. Because everybody's on the same goal. Everybody's trying to make their money. Everybody's like, you know, and there seems to be, you know, kind of like a bond. That I guess my mother even, like, whenever my whenever we're out to dinner with my mother, my mother always had to let the waitress know that she used to be a waitress. And it was like, oh, yeah, so you understand. Yeah, yeah. And I, like, but I guess you do. You know, there is, there is a certain bond. You learn who's who, what's what. You know, Charlene had her first lesson on large tables of, of, of young girls, you know, where she had a table of 14, 14 um, college girls, college softball team, and they wanted 12 separate checks. And they're moving around, like, and I'm like, that's only something, women, only women would do that. Not to have a separate check, you know, everybody does that. But 12 separate, to, to sit there, like, we're going to need 12 separate check. You will never see a group of 14 guys get together and then ask for 12 separate check. You just, 12 separate check. You will never, ever, ever see that, ever. Like, I'm sorry. You, you just won't. You just won't.
but they do it without without a second thought. It's always funny. But sometimes this and the answers are very simple and they're right in front of you. So I will just make the suggestion. I mean, if you're able and willing and you're looking for a way out and you're looking for something you can do, like try being a server, you know? You'll meet different people. You'll meet motivated people, people that you don't really have to worry about being on the narky scale, you know, because they're there to make money and to do what they need to do. And I'll tell you another thing. When people go out to eat, they're generally in a good mood. They want to be happy. They want to be sold to. They want to drink. They want to have a good time. So it's something that could help your mood too and your depression as well. So it's something to think about if you're, if you're stuck, if you have nobody, and you're nowhere. Think about doing that. Think about being a server because... You know, she's already, like, met, like, six new people that she's like, yeah, I think we're all going to start hanging out and, and doing this and that, and they're trading shifts and doing all that type of stuff. And, you know, I haven't really seen her personality bounce like, bounce like this for a long time. So and it's been nice. So sometimes the answers are simple and they're right in front of you. So this one might have been a little rambly. Sorry. Um, again, I am going to get to, so I got about five in the queue. I'm starting off with a big, long story, uh, with the audio. It's probably going to be well over two to three, about between two and three hours. So that, that one's going to be the first one up. I got a couple after that. Very short queue. So if you want to get in on that, want to get added in on it, you know what to do with the links in the description box. Also, if you just want to make a contribution to the channel in general, keep it su supported, growing, and successful. Channel needs the support, always does. Um, also, make sure you're following me on that library app as well, just as a backup, because it is going to get to the day where you're going to click on YouTube and they're going to be like, fuck you, Ollie. Fuck you. We only want MSNBC and corporate globalist links. On, on our platform. So look at that as well. All right, everybody. Thank you again for your support and your patience. Looks like the hearings are about to pick back up. Let me know what you think in the, in the, uh, in the comment section below. I'll talk to you all soon. Take care. Bye.